All right. Uh, my name is Ravi. I'm going to be presenting my paper here in the form of a Google Slides. Um, let's see if I can just do a slideshow. I should be sharing my screen, so hopefully this works. Um, my project is uh, a study or a an argument based around the attitudes towards Indian English at Cal Poly. Um, we covered accent discrimination and language bias um, throughout this quarter, but I wanted to gear it towards something a little more direct um, and something that is found within our own community. So I created a scope of Cal Poly with a focus on Indian English. Um, my main argument is that Indian professors and students at Cal Poly are often the victim of uh, accent discrimination, language bias, and racism. Um, Cal Poly has failed to properly address these issues and promote a sense of belonging for Indian English speaking members of the Cal Poly slow community. Um, I've got three main like points um, that I make throughout this paper um, or three main like cases, I guess, that I create. But before that, I wanna get into some background here. Um, it is imperative that people understand that Indian English is not a bastardized form of the English language. Um, research in the United States just finds that um, Indian English or, you know, speaking English with an Indian accent is often uh, disproportionately discriminated against um, in comparison to some other accents. Um, similarly, in a study in 2022 done by Dr. Jessica Spence, um, it was a um, study done with nearly 5,000 participants um, found that accent bias and discrimination is still highly significant within the job hiring process in the United States. Um, so this is just to establish a kind of relevancy that this does still exist um, in not just the education sector, but also the job hiring sector. Um, our textbook, Global Englishes by Jenkins, um, you know, also asserts that in English is illegitimate form of English. So it's just imperative that we keep this in mind um, and really fight for this. Um, my first topic is uh, the racist poly ratings reviews. Um, I talk about this in a little more depth in my paper, but um, if you're unfamiliar with the poly rating site, it is a website online that has been around for almost a decade now on which students can anonymously review and rate their professors. Um, and after digging through poly ratings for a few hours, um, I found that Indian professors' pages on poly ratings are disproportionately attacked with negative reviews surrounding their accent or even their race. Um, as I've listed here, Dr. Agarwal, um, his professor, his professor review page um, had 37% of negative reviews accent his mention his accent. Um, and Dr. Mahay Muhammad Adil Ajay also um, suffers from this at an even higher extent. Um, I maybe should have put a trigger warning here. I'm sorry, but there are some racist comments below that um, you can see here. Um, and so the issue with this is that this site has existed for almost a decade. And certainly Cal Poly is aware of this site and is definitely aware that there are some reviews that should be removed yet they haven't done anything about it. So this failure to monitor these reviews and to remove these racist comments um, reflects poorly. And it, it creates a failure to uphold these claims of protecting minorities and to you know, promote new diversity within our campus, um, both in the student body and within faculty. It's just hard to believe or uphold that when these comments still exist and there clearly isn't a plan to get these off of the internet. Um, Topic number two, um, this is centered around the admission site. Um, on the admission site, there are two exams that a student has to take, um, uh, language exams, excuse me, um, the TOEFL and the IELTS. Um, and the criteria for students that don't have to take this um, is a little unclear. It simply says a strong command of the English language is a requirement of admission for admission of international students. The TOEFL or the IELTS is required for all applicants whose native language is not English. And there are 33 countries that are listed. Um, these include Belize, Gambia, UK, and Australia. However, India is not exempt um, 
and is not on this list, despite its large population of English speakers. Um, Jenkins talks about in Global English is that India has a population of English speakers similar to that of the United States and of China, um, being you know one of the top three largest countries in the world that speaks English. Um, and I think that the what I'm arguing here is that this unclear criteria creates room um, for people to wonder why is India not included here? Um, and that can lead to all sorts of negative assumptions. Um, and it, you know, silently kind of affirms a lot of accent bias and um, accent discrimination. So um, I think this is also a failure on Cal Poly's part for failing to create really clear, strict criteria for why India would or would not be exempt from these language barrier exams. Um, and topic number three um, is the case of Hill Krishnan. So I go a little more into that about this in my paper, but again, um, in 2015, Hill Krishnan was a former, or yeah, at the time of 2015, was an assistant professor at Cal Poly. Um, he received tremendous support from hundreds of students in the form of petitions and meetings with the board directors when he was denied his tenure track position after working for nearly, nearly two years in the Department of Political Science. Um, despite these efforts from his students, Cal Poly failed to overturn their decision and did not offer Krishnan with a tenured position. So Krishnan had worked in the department for two years. All the students really wanted him to you know, go on the tenured track, but he was denied this. Um, he was not, you know, um, what is the word I'm looking for? He was not considered for this. So, um, you know, nearly 100 students put together petitions and they created all kinds of testimonials for him. Um, and he was still denied. Um, Jeffrey Armstrong even refused to be involved in the petition and did not aid Krishna nor students in their efforts. Um, this is a pretty blatant failure of Cal Poly to support an Indian professor. Um, they also denied their students the right to have their voices heard in the process of selecting their professors. Um, and today, currently, I was just curious, so I went online and looked at the um, Department of Political Science Board. And currently, there are 10 political science professors who are tenured or on the tenure track. Nine of these 10 identify as white. There are no tenured Indian professors in this program. And at Cal Poly actively listening to their students, Krishnan would be on that list. So again, this is just a failure of Cal Poly to uphold diversity. Um, it was a it was a failure to support this professor and to listen to students who really wanted this professor around. So um yeah, so some solutions here to my topics that I talk about um is to monitor and remove the racist comments. Um and comments attacking a professor for their accent. Um there should be a plan in place there. Um, secondly, there should be clearer criteria for countries' exemption from language uh, admission exams on that site and on that page. And third of all, um, Cal Poly needs to listen to their students, and they actively need to fight for diversity within the faculty. I think the case of Hill Krishnan um, was definitely an eye-opener, or at least I hope it was. Um, I think that's something that they can understand and take and, you know, see that they clearly kind of messed up there. Um, but overall, that is my argument, and I hope you enjoyed.